All right, I'm Nick Lindley. I'm going to be talking about JQ. First show of hands, who here has ever had to deal with JSON? Good. How many people have to deal with JSON from a command line? A few less. Anybody ever use JQ? A couple? OK. So this is a command line tool, and it's also a language just for like, processing, manipulating JSON. And it works through filters. So I'm going to start out with some fake HTTP logs. You may have seen something that looks kind of like this, where you have a bunch of junk, um, and you just need to do something about it. Uh, so we're going to start out with the most basic JQ filter, which is dot. You don't even have to put the dot, but we're going to put the dot. And this is just your identity filter. And by default, JQ is going to take each object in the stream, or each JSON value in the stream, and it is going to spit it back out pretty, pretty printed. Now let's say we want to do a little bit more with that. Um, we can start, let's say we want to get the path out of it. All right, now we have a list of strings with all the paths. If we don't want it wrapped in quotes, we can give it a dash R option, and that will spit it out raw. Now a lot of times, whenever we have like a lot of lines of JSON, what I really want is to do something with the collection. So we're going to use this dash S option to slurp it into an array. So now that we have an array, we can do a little more uh, with the, some of the built-in functions. For example, let's say we want to rewrite this, and we just want to get the method and the path out of it. So now we have a much smaller object to deal with, um, if that's all the data we care about, or if we wanted to you know, put it into a string or something like that, we could do that. And then let's say, I don't know, maybe we want to get the paths. Path is a bad example because they're all unique. Let's say we want to do the method and just find what the unique methods are. Now we've narrowed this down to a much smaller set. Um, and you notice that I just did something new here, which is this pipe. So we can apply one filter, and then we can take that result and pipe it into the next filter. So it lets you kind of chain up a bunch of different functions. Uh, so maybe we want to do something like map over the response time in milliseconds. All right, so now we have all of the individual response times. And we could add them up. That's not terribly useful. But if we divide it by the length, now we have an average. And let's say we want to do this average a lot. Surprisingly, I did not see average in the built-ins. So I'm just going to create a new function, which is add divided by length. And then we are going to pipe that there. We get the same result. So, and you can start building up these if you really want to like build your own libraries. You can put them in .jq files and uh, you know have your own little library of these functions that you reuse a lot. Um, other than that, uh, those are the most common things I use. I'll just show you a couple more examples real quick from my history. Here's an example where I use dash e. So if your response returns false or null, it's going to return a non-zero status code. So if you just want to check the JSON for some property, maybe in a script, you can do that as well. Um, here, I said, if anything in this stream, or in this array, actually, has a method of get, we're going to return true. Do that again. You can see exit stat, the echo of the status code is zero. Let's do something different like teapot. Okay, now it's false. Our status code is one. So that's something I use on occasion in scripts. Um, and then it also has some serializers. This is the last thing I'll show you. But if you want to learn more, uh, go to the docs. They have all the, you know, pretty full docs. It'll give you a lot of ideas. And it's very powerful. Somebody actually wrote most of JQ in JQ. So you can probably do it with the language if you can think of it. It might just be a little tricky to figure out. Um, uh, Actually, I'm going to have to figure this out from here. Here's an example of one of the serializers at CSV. So you structure the data correctly. And then all of a sudden, I have a CSV that maybe I can pass off to somebody who wants to import this into Excel. And I was dealing with JSON. So that's another thing I've used that for. And that is it. If you have any more questions about it, uh, or you want to like put my skills to the test, I'll probably fail. But hit me up afterwards, and we can, I'll answer whatever questions you have.